All right, people, here we go. As a special request, what we're trying to do is find some eigenvalues and eigenvectors. First, in order to get the eigenvectors, you need to find the eigenvalues. And how do you find these eigenvalues? Let A be a square matrix. A scalar lambda is an eigenvalue of A if and only if. It looks like it's one word, and sometimes people do abbreviate it I, F, F. If and only if, that means that it goes both ways. It's a biconditional. The determinant of your matrix A minus lambda, the scalar, times the identity matrix of the same size A is equal to zero. Okay, let's go ahead and proceed with this example. Yeah, I have this square matrix A, which was totally essential, on looking for the determinant of the characteristic matrices. Okay, that's gonna look like, uh huh. Okay, the determinant. Here I'm taking my A and I'm subtracting off the eigenvalue times the identity matrix. This is a scalar times a matrix. The subtraction still a matrix, still a square matrix. I can take the determinant. 5 minus lambda, 1, 1, 5 minus lambda, okay. So how do you take a determinant of the square matrix? Or, yeah, for the 2 by 2, ooh. So then, this is 5 minus lambda times 5 minus lambda minus, oh, one, fun. I multiply this guy out. Looks like I have 25. Yes, this one times that one, double it. Minus 10 lambda plus lambda squared. Yeah, if you want to see multiplying special products, check out the video on multiplying special products. Minus 1. Fun. Very nice. Uh-huh. This, let me clean it up. Let me clean it up. Here I'm looking for lambda squared minus 10 lambda um, plus 24. Sure, this is my characteristic polynomial. Uh-huh. Back here, what I wanted to do is I wanted to see where this determinant was zero, and those would give me my eigenvalues. When I do do that, this is called my characteristic equation. I need to solve this guy, sure. Now we had a nice numbered example. In the real world, they're not all this nice. This is factorable, uh-huh. And if you wanna see factoring these things, check out the video factoring leading coefficients one. Yes! I'm looking for the factors of 24 that add to be 10. Are there any? Yeah, six and four, so you gotta get that. You gotta get that. Six and four, lambda, lambda. Oh, hmm. Yeah, signs are the same, and they're both negative. Negative. Nice. What have we just done? We're going to use the zero factor property, and we find that lambda is um, 4 and 6. And these are my eigenvalues. Great. So we just found, found, found some eigenvalues. Now we want to go through and find our eigenvectors. Uh-huh. How do we find eigenvectors? Let A be a square matrix. Okay, a vector V is an eigenvector of A corresponding to an eigenvalue of lambda if and only if, I told you some people abbreviate it like that, I am one of those people. If that vector V is a non-trivial solution to the system, square matrix A minus the scalar lambda times the identity matrix dotted with or multiplied by v is equal to zero. Huh. Okay, now let's get back to our example. We see we still have the same matrix e and our new found eigenvalues. What we want to do is we want to find um, our matrix e and multiply it by some arbitrary vector and we want that to be zero. Yes, so then I can take that matrix e, five minus I need to choose an eigenvalue. Here I'm gonna let m to be lambda before for our first eigenvector. 
5 minus 4, 1, 1, 5 minus 4, sure. And then I'm going to need to multiply that with x, y. Yeah. And I want that product to be my zero vector. Okay. Sure. Um, bam. 5 minus 4 is 1. So then we're going to see we're going to have two equations. Yes. I'm going to have x plus y and x plus y. Okay. Sure. Now that's after I took care of the product. And I want that to be 0, 0. Great. Let me go into my augmented matrices. Uh huh. Okay. I'll take it over here. So then um, my augmented matrices are going to get me 1, 1, 1, 1, none, none. Finish him. Here I'm going to take um, minus row 1, add it to row 2. Okay, sure. So then this is going to be 1, 1, none, 0, 0, 0. Uh-huh. That's when I do this. So now what does this say? x plus y is equal to 0. Well, we knew that originally, but here we're not stepping any skips and we're showing all the work. Uh-huh, what does that say? x is equal to a minus y. All right, far out. Here we'll let x be any number, anything, right? Well, you don't want it to be zero, but um, let's just let it be one, fun. If I throw that in there, then y is gonna be a minus one. Okay, sure. Um, with a little, mm, yeah, back thought, I should have let y be 1, and then x would have been easier to evaluate, but this was fine. Um, yes. So then my vector, my eigenvector, the one I was trying to find, x, y, that's going to be um, 1 and, that's not there, minus 1. Yes. And you found your first eigenvector. We'll just put this notation on it, e4, 4. four eigenvector when lambda, your eigenvalue, was 4. Alrighty then, so similar, the things happen with my next eigenvalue. So now I'm looking at the value being 6. I cruise on over here, watch the changes, they're in a different color. Sure. Here now I'm letting lambda be 6. So now in here I put that as 6, and I put that as 6. And here this is going to make me a minus x and a minus y. Fine, I'm taking it up here. That was a minus there. Follow it, follow it, follow it. Here it is, boom. Okay, sure. So then I'm gonna take row one and add it to row two. Oh, here, I'm just gonna take row one and add it to row two. Killing row two and leaving this guy like that. It means I'm gonna have a minus x plus y. Okay, sure. So then that says, that x is equal to y. So I'm going to let x be 1, and then y is 1. So then my eigenvector is going to be 1, 1. And this was for eigenvalue 6. I guess we should write it. When um, eigen 4, meaning my eigenvalue is 4, my eigenvector was 1 minus 1. Yes. And e6, this is um, 1 and 1. When my eigenvalue was 6, my eigenvector was 1, 1. And then what? A box. Hey. And a butterfly. Yes. Why? Because when you go back and you change something in the beginning, and it has a different outcome, it kind of has the butterfly effect. Mm -hmm.